Welcome everyone, I hope you're well. This is Simeon and in this video I'm going to show you the latest additions in Project Lavina Beta. To demonstrate this I'm using a scene from Evermotion. You can see the light setup here and the setup itself. And I'm quickly just going to export the scene as a V-Ray scene. Now once in Lavina the scene has been loaded and to speed up the frame rate I might reduce the resolution. But I would like to avoid this if possible, so I'm going to keep it higher. And let's take a look at the, some of the optimizations that we can do to speed up the frame rate. In the render tab, I'm just going to start uh, lowering some of the bounces. Let's first see the refraction effect of the scene. Okay, so I'm going to slowly reduce that and up to the point where I see uh, some artifacts or uh, significant change. And the same goes for the reflections and the GI. Uh, so. Yes, with one bounce, it works nicely. I can also turn off the shading graph, which will simplify the materials. And in this case, it works without losing any fidelity. If I get closer to the leaves here, you'll see that there is no opacity. So let's turn this on and bring back the cutout. And let's explore the scene now a little bit. Let's turn off the depth of field. Let's have a look at some of the shortcuts I'm going to be utilizing. First one is going to be the roll camera. Uh, it's control middle mouse button. And then uh, the level the camera, which is X and the movement shortcuts for WASD. Let's straighten up this uh, building here by pressing the X button, which will level up the camera, and move it a bit uh, upward so that we can see the sky once more. All right and maybe get the, the camera a bit darker, but instead of using the global exposure, I'm going to use the shutter speed. So 50% uh, more and save this as a camera. Now the physical camera has been exposed in this version and uh, let's adjust the white balance. I'm using pinkish color because the HDRI in this scene casts uh, this tint and I'm compensating for this in the physical camera. Another thing that we can do is uh, start exploring the scene by using the tilde key. And let's find a few viewpoints and camera presets for the scene. All right. Let's move around. Sensitivity of my mouse is currently very low, so I'm going to increase that uh, from the options to one. All right, that's much better. Okay. And uh, store a few cameras so I'm going to do a walkthrough to here, store this uh, level at first and store it as another camera. So that would be the first part of the animation that I'm going to do. And for that, I'm going to use the animation editor um, and drag and drop the cameras from the list as clips on the timeline. So drag that, drag this one right after it. And I'm going to alt and scroll to zoom out. Now I have just uh, no interpolation, so let's add a transition after this clip. I'm going to set the default duration to 2 and the snapping at 0.2 so that I can snap while resizing the clips and uh, the transitions. All right. So this looks good, but let's apply an easing by selecting out quad. Much better. All right. Let's use the in and out for easing at both ends, the beginning and the end. I'm going to set the duration to 10 seconds. Okay, um, the first frame actually takes a few seconds, so let's make it transient and that will make it of zero length so that the playhead just goes through it as a keyframe. All right, let's find another uh, interesting point view okay i like this uh, position here and i'd like to orbit around uh, the wine so i'm going to switch the mode to around selection i'm going to navigate around the selection oops but uh, whichever object i have selected that will be my orbiting point okay and i can also use the ray hit so this is exactly where my mouse is going to hit and since my mouse is a bit faster i'm going to click this button over here which increases the navigation precision while orbiting and panning. You can see I have much finer control over my point of view. Let's adjust the focal length a bit. 
Okay. I'm going to store this as a camera. Enable the depth of field. Set the focus. And actually, I'm going to uh, save the camera again so that the focus is included. And I'm going to orbit around and change the focus at the same time uh, on the sign here. So let's set up another keyframe and adjust the focus distance accordingly. Okay, let's do an animation now. Drag the clips. And also I'll make the this keyframe here transient. Okay, we have now a clear cut between the two cameras. Add transition before the, the last one. Uh, make this guy transient as well. And let's scrub and preview the animation. Now the orbiting looks good, but the depth of field is rather large for the defocus. And uh, I can change that by using the F number, but that will affect the exposure. So I'm going to just enable the aperture size here, which will not affect the exposure, and control the defocus amount. Let's store this in the camera views again. For each one. Okay, aperture size store. Timeline clips are going to be automatically updated with the new values of the defocus. To illustrate the camera roll, I'm going to find a better position. So somewhere around the bulbs. I forgot to turn off the mouse sensitivity button. Okay. So this works good. Now level the camera and I'm going to start rolling by holding control and dragging with the middle mouse button. All right, as you can see, the there is a snapping distance, which is uh, 10 degrees at, uh, the, at the moment. I'm going to increase that to show you what it looks like uh, with 20. So the way it works is if the camera roll falls within uh, 20 degrees from the horizon, it will snap back to horizontal position. Let's adjust the focus make the shot a little bit better and store it as a new one. And I also have changed the shape of the bouquet from the advanced uh, scene settings. The file, advanced scene settings, camera, and uh, let's change it to six with the number of sides. You can see now the hexagon shape. Lower the denoiser because in this case we can see the shape better. Adjust a little bit the color correction, maybe Throw in a little bit of a LUT. Okay, filmic looks good. So I'm going to add a few more cameras and render the whole sequence in high quality. I'm going to take advantage of the adaptive sampling that we added in the previous version, um, which I can illustrate by activating the pixel overlay and increasing the noise threshold. And you will see that only the pixels that do not meet this noise threshold are being rendered. Everything else is not being rendered. Okay, so I've added a few more cameras and once everything is done, I'm going to save and export um, this as a VRDX file and then go in 3ds Max where um, I have prepared a script that I can install by just dragging and dropping. Um, customize, add this to the toolbar and this script is going to allow me to import the cameras from Lavina. This is it. And um, it has the ability to import all the cameras as static, animated camera, uh, set the time range, or override already existing ones. So if you do this iteratively. And the cameras have been imported and the time slider adjusted appropriately. Now let's uh, look through all the cameras. And the Lavina camera path is the animated camera, which has all the trajectories and the animation that we did in Lavina. So you can go ahead and refine or render with high quality the already created animation directly from 3ds Max. To finish the video, here's the animated sequence from Lavina. Thank you and take care.